Hey everyone, welcome to My Worst State Double Date. We are so happy to be joined by one of our very good podcasting friends. This is Katie from Queen's Podcast. Hello everybody yeah. and thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. I love you ladies. Aww, oh, we love yeah. you too, Katie. <laughs> we met Katie um, a year ago, a little bit over a year ago now in Austin because you're based out mm -hmm. of Austin. Is yes. that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the Outlier Podcast Festival. And then we reconnected recently in Denver. So we're just like jet setting yes. all over the country, go. Um, hanging out with Katie. <laughs> and it's always an amazing time. Katie, can you tell us a little bit about your podcast? I would love to. So I am the creator and co-host of Queen's Podcast. We are, um, me and my best friend host it. We mix cocktails with biographies of exciting women in history. And yeah, we're going on seven years now. We, we, no, wow. no sign of stopping. There is no shortage. It was really funny when we first started, people were like, are you going to run out of people to talk about? And I was like, no, history is long and over half the population has always been women. So <laughs> we're always going to have people to talk about. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I am. Um, I actually recently was because I was considering doing something from like, you know, like an older period yeah. piece for our tainted love. And I was looking at a queen, but then I realized that Christina or Keegan had already done it. And I was like, oh, shoot. And then but I, when I was like searching on um, the podcast, of course, yours was the first <laughs> one to come up. But then I also saw there was somebody else had done Queen Hatshepsut. Have you done her? The yet? Egyptian, the ancient Egyptian queen? Yeah. We haven't yet. No, but she's definitely on the to do list. That would be it. Yeah, that'd be a really good one. Yeah. Katie, I really enjoy your TikTok. So if you're not oh, following you. Queen's podcast on TikTok, it's just little bite sized bits of history and royal history. And it's just so delightful. You do thank such you. an amazing job. Oh, thank you. I like y'all's mm -hmm. TikTok too. Oh, thanks. Now, is Nathan so jealous that he can't be here today? Yes, he wanted me to say hi to all of y'all. And that, and I told him we would schedule something else where all of us can be together soon. Yes, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Well, awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and, and dig in uh, to dating okay. stuff. Yes. Uh, now, <laughs> what is your current sitch? Are you dating I single? I am married and I have been with the same man for almost 14 years now. Wow. Yeah. How did the two so, of you meet? It's actually a really cute story. Do y'all want the long oh. version or the short version? The oh. long version. <laughs> okay. All the so, um, juicy details. So he uh, grew up in England, but his mom is from Minnesota. So he has dual citizenship. And um, after he Lucky finished you. college, I bet you get to travel so much. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I was telling somebody the other day, I was like, Ugh, I've been to England so many times. And I was like, Ugh, I really shouldn't complain so about that. I'm so bored of it. Like, yeah. I know. I was like, can't we go somewhere else? But no. Um, so he had dual citizenship. And after he finished college, um, like it's pretty common to take like a gap year in, mm -hmm. in Europe. And so he was uh, like backpacking across the U.S. Basically, there was um, back then there was this program that us as women probably would never do this. But as a man, he didn't think twice about it. There's this program mm -hmm. back then where you could I think it was like a thousand dollars and it was all the um, all the bus rides you could take on Greyhound for like six months oh or my something. God. And so that's what he was doing. Wow. He was just kind of like <laughs> hopping on a Greyhound and like staying at hostels and stuff. I mean, what that's amazing. Like. That is one of, yeah, exactly. Like that is one of the things that I think about that I'm like, oh man, what a bummer that I'm not a dude, that I, I can't know. do stuff like that because solo travel and things like that have always been so intriguing to me. Like I yeah. still want to do it, but you have to think so much more deeply about how you do it, where you I mean, do it so that yeah. you can maintain like your safety but man i would love to do like a solo hike or a solo journey across yeah. the united states in greyhound yeah. buses like that he like actually had cool two adventure. friends with him though oh um, okay. as well mm -hmm. but still like i i would never think to buy a greyhound bus because i'm thinking about the creeps i'm gonna meet you know at mm -hmm. oh, totally. stations That's at true. 2 a.m or whatever but yeah. um yeah. yeah and buses are the creepiest yeah. as, a, <laughs> as a former bus rider in los angeles where that was my only mode of transportation for a couple of years <laughs> uh, you learn very quickly the ways to try and avoid the creeps because yeah. buses are the creepiest absolutely no eye contact no, no, eye, no, eye, no eye contact, contact. <laughs> headphones sunglasses <laughs> 
I've never had a uh, bad experience with the Austin bus. Um, back okay. before Uber, I used to take it quite often and never really had a bad experience. But they're nicer. <laughs> maybe. But so that's what he was doing. And I, at the time, was dating a professional BMX writer like wow um, and I knew like I was like I give this a month tops like I was not serious <laughs> about it he was not a serious person it was just fun you know mm-hmm. um and so I he and I had a coffee date planned and so at the time I didn't live close to downtown Austin so I drove downtown found parking and then text him and he's like oh I'm gonna be like an hour late and so oh. I almost just was like, fuck it, I'm going home. Yeah. Because that's my usual. An yes. hour is when people way don't too res- late. Yeah. To when be. people don't respect your time, when people tell you who they are, listen to them. And if somebody, mm-hmm. yeah. So I was like, but I was like, oh, but I found this really good parking spot and it's a pretty day. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm just going to, I want to see if I can find something to do to kill some time for a couple of hours or for an hour. If not, I'll go home. If so, cool. I'll meet up with him. And so um, I'm crossing the street, and uh, yeah, this British guy just came up to me and said, uh, hey, I like your sunglasses. And I said, oh, okay, this is something I could do for an hour Mm -hmm. (laughs) to kill some time. (laughs) This will work. And so me and him went and got coffee and just chit-chatted. And uh, yeah, he he was like, I'm actually on my way to New Orleans. Um, this is like a stop and because uh, they were coming from the West Coast, I guess. And I was like, oh, OK. And he was like, but, you know, me and my friends will be back in Austin for like four or five days in a couple of weeks. Do you want to meet up whenever <gasps> I'm back? And I was like, sure. And I gave him my number. And um, yeah. And then I went on a really boring coffee date with the um with the bmx guy. bmx guy yeah and, <laughs> oh and um, isn't it obvious when you have like that moment when you can just yeah. a b test you know and you're like a, B yeah. testing i've never thought about mm-hmm. it that way i love mm-hmm. that yeah <laughs> you're just like ooh, yeah it, yes totally. def- definite difference here <laughs> yeah and so then um yeah i went home and was like talking with my roommate who's still one of my dearest friends and uh, I was like, yeah, I met this British guy, but like, I'm never, he lives in England. I'm never going to talk to him again. And um, so anyway, we're married now. <laughs> that, I think that's uh, amazing. amazing. That is yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's a, cute, it's it's a really a, cute story. It's fate, really. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. it was meant that's to be insanity. because what are the chances that you would be downtown that you didn't just leave, that you found a yeah. good parking spot? You know, yeah. like, it's like. A million things could have gone just slightly differently, yeah. and then you, you know, wouldn't be wouldn't married to this man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean, it also works out really well that you know he didn't need to get any kind of visa to work here and live here. He is oh. already a citizen. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that's, oh, that's, that's how incredible. I met my husband. <laughs> Dude, that was like your that was like your worst date and best date combined into one. Kind of <laughs> the the date with the BMXer wasn't like horrible we we did have a bad date whenever like I quit dating him um oh, but that's a whole different story but like I was oh, never no. I was never that serious about it you know I was yeah, yeah. just sort of like oh he's he's here for a good time not a long time so yeah right it's yep. convenience exactly. <laughs> we've all had a few BMXers in our day I think sure yeah. sure we've had <laughs> our version BMX by- <laughs> our version of of the BMXer which in my case was always a skinny musician oh, oh my yeah. goodness before I met my husband, who he's the first guy I've ever dated that wasn't in a band or something. Like <laughs> oh I had, I very much had a type of a guy with lots of tattoos and no job. And yep. my yeah. husband is a is a very straight laced, uh, no tattoos, not in a band, steady job kind of guy. So <laughs> that was yeah, the universe type stepping in, girl. <laughs> that was the universe stepping in. The universe was like, "Honey, listen, yeah. no we more. Gotta, we got to turn this thing around." That BMX guy was like, "I'm gonna be an hour late," and the universe was like, "No, no, 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 no we're not we're doing this. Not it. today. No, never. No more. No, okay. no more. Put this guy mattresses in your path. on the floor. No, no more. Mm, oh my God, mattresses on the floor. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I've been in plenty of those. Yep." <laughs> <laughs> no sheets. No, absolutely oh no sheets. Just to, I would yeah, never go back to my twenties. Jesus, 
girl. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's so funny. People, I'm always shocked by people who are like, man, if I could go back and do it again. And I'm like, why? Why, why? would you? I, oh, well, ugh. I, ugh. No, yeah, I love it. Move forward from where you are. This is fine. I love my standards <laughs> I have now. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Having a job. Yeah. First and foremost. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. That's so wild. Like, honestly, that was like Keegan said, like fate stepping in. Like, I just can't imagine like anything more like that is the, the most interesting meet cute I've ever heard. I know. It's, it's a really it's cute story. Yeah. <laughs> but like, right. I, uh, sometimes I just like, if I don't have time to tell the whole story, when people are like, how do you meet? I just say downtown because <laughs> it's oh. just easier. <laughs> like, <laughs> just downtown. downtown Austin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you mentioned like one of your red flags being like somebody not respecting your time or what mm -hmm. have you. Do you have like other red flags or did you have any when you were dating that you were like, well, nope, this is yeah, not going to happen. So I, I, I have one real ex-boyfriend. I've not had a whole lot of time being single in my life. I had one ex-boyfriend that I had for a very long time. And then about two years later, I met my husband. So, um, and he's a good man. I love him very dearly, but he, hopefully he doesn't listen to this, but he was so <laughs> possessive and it comes Ooh. from a place of insecurity. And I Absolutely. get that now uh, in my thirties, I get that. And he's a lovely, lovely man and he has a lovely wife and, there we I don't have any ill feelings towards him but after dating him I was like possessive maybe isn't the right word jealous jealous um, and I was like well, I'm never also, he was in his 20s as yeah. well right like yeah. I feel like that's such a common trait so I like because I feel like you're giving a lot of caveats because you don't want to like come across as if you're bashing him or hurting his feelings people grow and change and I yeah. really do feel like men in their 20s i think that that's a very common trait that they are insecure like there's some insecurity there yeah. they're new to dating they found this person they're really excited about they want to hold yeah. on to and they get really jealous right like yeah. they get scared is really what it mm. is it's like they get they get scared and i think that that's something that um men do tend to grow out of they don't always not every man grows <laughs> out of that but just because you're one way in your 20s doesn't mean that you're going to be that way forever exactly. like it's a learning experience i did stuff when i was dating in my 20s i was way more jealous in my yeah. 20s yeah. you know oh, than i yeah, would ever same. be now you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i've just I never been a that. jealous person so like it's not something that like resonates with me mm -hmm. um but yeah, after that, I was just like, because it was, oh God, it was just like sometimes walking on eggshells around him, just Exhausting. being like, I went to a party yeah. and these are all the people that were at the party. And like, oh. it was just, oh, and now like my husband now, because me and the ex both ended up moving to Austin because we're not from here. And like, we've bumped into him and his wife and we will sit and chit chat when it happens and stuff. And it's, um. And I just know, I'm just so grateful that my husband is like, um, just really chill about it. He's like, his attitude has always been like, why would I, you're with me because you want to be with me. Why would I care if why would I be worried, you're friendly huh? with your ex? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so. Honestly, there's nothing sexier than confidence. <sighs> yeah. You said it before, and that is just somebody who is like, I don't, I don't need to worry about that shit. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so yeah, my big ick, my big red flag ever since that relationship in my early 20s was uh, jealousy. It's just not something I have time for in my life. So, yeah. Yeah. I have a no, question so for you. Oh, go for it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go for I it. have a question for you. So you mentioned that you don't have a lot of dating experience. Neither do I. I kind of went from one serious relationship to another serious relationship. Now, one thing that I noticed about you right away whenever we met in Austin, because we were at the bar, we were having some drinks, and you have a Pisces necklace. And I was yes. like, girl. Oh my gosh, I remember that. It was girl. so funny because I, for I forgot I was wearing the necklace too. And Keegan was like, are you a Pisces? And I was like, you were like, she's so is intuitive. Is it just that obvious? This is amazing. She was like, you have the necklace on. I was like, oh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to think that it was my intuition clicking in. But um, I wonder if that's kind of like a Pisces trait, that like serial monogamy, mm, that like very maybe. quick, like, you know, when you know, you know, and if you don't, it's kind of like a pass in the night. Kind of maybe. I definitely, yeah, like, um, I will definitely say, because I was single for two years 
And I definitely, I mean, it was my hoe phase. And I don't regret. Mm -hmm. I think everyone yep. needs to have a hoe phase if it's something they want to have. Amen. Sure. I say that um, all yeah. the time. I'm actually going to do Good. some needlework and make a, like, some. A hoe phase? Yes. yes. <laughs> everyone needs a hoe phase. You learn so That's much true. about yourself. You learn what you up. like, what you yes. don't like, mm -hmm. what gives you the ick, what, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I will say, Keegan, to what you were saying, though, I definitely. I haven't been on a whole lot of second dates because I was mm -hmm. really bad about like if I wasn't feeling it within the first 20 minutes, I was never going to feel it. Run. Yeah. yeah, it's that intuition, yeah, yeah. I think. It's just kind of I like, think so. uh, this isn't yeah. for me. So, you know, we'll we'll have fun. We'll, just, we'll hook up. We'll do whatever. But I'm not going to take this seriously until it's time to take it seriously. Yeah. And then it's like both feet in. We're doing yeah. this. <laughs> my Pisces, my Pisces ex was also a serial monogamist. Mm. So like when we broke up, he immediately started, was in another relationship. Yeah. My like Pisces ex as well. Really, <laughs> yeah. Relationship to relationship. It wasn't, mm -hmm. yeah. There yeah. was nothing casual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, uh, my future husband, soon to be husband, Pisces mm. as well. And very much like has had like just serious relationship, serious relationship. Well, yeah. I, I felt that with Eric immediately where I was just like, he was, he's like, I like you. I'm into you. I'm serious about this. Let's go. Yes. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? To a point where I was like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> slow it down. I was like, do it, girl. I was like, not with my friends. Get, get to it. Yeah, Katie. Uh, so we met like in December and uh, I moved him in in March and that was a big oh. topic of conversation. <laughs> I had two it opposing was, yeah. sides. I was like, <laughs> I, mean, I, was like I don't know this man. I, like, I don't know him. I don't know him. Well, it he seems to have in. worked out. And it seems it like did. you knew. Yeah. 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 Well, when's the wedding? Uh, November 4th. So mm -hmm. coming up soups fast. I mm -hmm. have a million things to do. Um, oh, I did it's, not miss being a bride. Oh, Jesus. That I, was uh, my wedding day was beautiful. And I'm so happy that it worked out the way it worked out. Gun to my head would never do it again. Oh, oh, yeah. Same. If you know, never if uh, if I find myself, you know, if Steve dies before me or something and I find myself getting remarried again, we are going to the courthouse and then yeah. then go out invite everybody to dinner afterwards or something I'm yeah blessed. you know i i recommend i'm just like my friends eloped like she went with um her husband they went to antigua they just did it they no. got some they found some witnesses while they were there and they had like that's a, amazing a week-long vacation in antigua and i and i was like that sounds incredible yep <laughs> a know? friend of mine did so there's this service where this company like plans a vacation for you and you don't mm, know yeah. until like you get to the airport like Surprise! where you're going and I'm trying I've heard of this I'm trying to remember it, where Christina's they went, like yeah a friend not. of mine <laughs> no, <laughs> a no. friend of mine did that for her wedding her and her husband and like the company oh. just planned it yeah my husband he's a Libra so he is a planner so when I told him about this that my friend Rebecca was doing this to get married he was like that sounds like torture I like, would do not it. knowing where they were gonna go <laughs> and like the company set up like found a space for them to get married and like hired an officiant and um some witnesses and they got married in front of like this lighthouse on this island i can't remember where they went um oh, like, but that's amazing that's so it looked amazing and but also these people are very non-traditional people as well and mm -hmm. i was telling my husband about it and he was just like that sounds like my worst nightmare no yeah I mean, not. Could, not. could you tell like the service for me yeah i think it sounds fun but like could you tell the service like these are the things we like these are the things we don't like yeah. so if you were like yeah you could tell them cold weather please don't send me to yeah. fucking you know antarctica please. yeah yeah, you know, like, yeah. yeah yes yes you could tell them i want tropical or i want yeah whatever yeah city or whatever yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly. no christina is not her capricorn energy could fucking never you would never never mm -mm. Mm -mm. no capricorns no absolutely not one of my best <laughs> friends is a capricorn i also think i feel like libras and capricorns can be pretty similar yeah and uh yeah they, capricorns <laughs> no. would never mm -mm. too much pla they love planning you love yeah. a spreadsheet you love an itinerary i get also, it also it's just like as much as i'm like you can like delegate i my control freak could never i'd be like mm, no i just need to make sure i don't know if they'll they're gonna do it right and of course they're like a professional service this they're is like, what this they is do and do. i'm like mm, no but mm -mm. i i think i could do this 
They'll do it better than and, me. And, I'll tell you that much. Be like, yeah. And then it's like, it's that type A personality who's like, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. And then it's like, but I'm doing everything. You're yeah. Right. <laughs> I always what am I think doing? I'm so exhausted. I always I think I want to do it. Everything. I, I think I want to do it until I'm doing it. And now I'm like, right. I'm so stressed that like, I, I just, <laughs> you know, I, I give the wheel, like, you know, Jesus, take the wheel. I can't, Jesus I don't want to do it. Wheel. Like no. I, <laughs> I, if I ever did it again, it would be completely like either, you know, something like that where like somebody else, I'm giving you a lump sum of money to send me on a vacation. You plan plan everything or just like hire a really beautiful photographer like go to the top of a fucking mountain buy a pretty dress and like call it a day and have a party later like right (laughs) absolutely wedding planning is so stressful and everyone tells you i feel like i need to like drive this point home because everyone tells you that that like wedding planning is really stressful and for some reason you think you're going to be the exception like everybody (laughs) is just like i'm sure it can't be that bad it's It's not that hard it's gonna be fine and then you find yourself like a couple months till the wedding and you're like fuck it I don't even care anymore I don't I don't care what happens just like (laughs) just putting your credit card down just like Mm -hmm. yeah you're like just pay for it I don't care just pay for it I spent so much money in those last like weeks before the wedding because I was just like what is it another hundred dollars I don't care just whatever whatever. fine (laughs) my husband and I don't fight but when we were planning our wedding we fought and so it's wow. just like it was just like over the dumbest shit too, yeah. like just the dumbest things. I'd be like, why did we just yell at each other about that? Like, what the fuck? So yeah, <laughs> zero out of ten stars. Would not plan a wedding again. My wedding was mm. beautiful. It was amazing. It was a really fun day. It turned out great, but never again. Yeah, mm. honestly, yep. we wouldn't be doing one if it wasn't for you know uh, Eric's dad and stuff like that. And just like. It's important to him. And we, we even said, we're like, we're going to keep it super casual. It's going to be really, really easy. And yet here I am less than two months out, like, ah, like yeah. fucking yeah. losing my <laughs> fucking mind about. Because absolutely. it's a big party. And like, even if you try and keep it simple and even if you only have like 50 guests, 50 guests is still a lot of people. And like trying to yeah. plan a party yeah. for that many people when people are traveling, especially and like everything else, it's like you've got to coordinate hotels and you've got to like do it's just yeah. it can end up when all you want to do is just like sit on the couch with some bugles and like watch fucking sandington or whatever <laughs> like you're like i do yes. not care <laughs> anymore yep. Relatable. i'm tired yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <gasps> oh goodness oh, man well i have a question for you katie okay um you do queen's podcast mm-hmm. i i'm curious because i've listened to a lot of your episodes for sure and <laughs> there's plenty to talk about i want to know who stands out to you because i mean we're we're a state podcast who stands out to you as like the epitome of like worst relationship (laughs) oh god goodness there's a few but the first that comes to mind have y'all ever heard of a woman named juana of castile oh yes yes i haven't haven't done the deep dive Mm -hmm. she i know that they called her quote unquote crazy we have we have a air quotes. we have a sticker in our merch store that says Juana wasn't crazy, and then it says mm-hmm. it in Spanish too because she's mm. from Spain. Um, Love it, but yeah, she uh, yeah she's known in history as Joanna or Juana the Mad or Juana la Loca, um, which we don't like. But no, she uh, she was head over heels in love with her husband, and he was a garbage monster person and uh he cheated on her like right in front of her and then would gaslight her and um, it's like she shaggy had... it wasn't me but i saw say it wasn't you yeah yeah i literally <laughs> and like he would gaslight her and um like and she historians believe now that she probably suffered from extreme postpartum depression because she was like oh. continuously pregnant for like 10 years oh and um so like there was this one story that like she was she had her baby in um maybe she was in spain or something and he was in the netherlands or something like that so she had her baby and he just kept writing being like you have to come home you have to come home you have to come home but it really wasn't safe for her to travel so soon after having the baby and she was just gonna have to like, like leave the baby in spain and so she's finally like well my husband wants to see me and remember she is over the moon in love with him 
And she's like, my husband wants to see me. I'm so excited. And so she travels when it wasn't safe. She travels through these lands that are, like, actually, like, France and Spain were fighting. So she could have been taken hostage and, like, you know, held for ransom because she was a royal person. You know, like, right. travels, yeah. puts herself in all this danger. She gets there and catches him in bed oh. with one of like her ladies in waiting he and so the story that terrible. makes her look so crazy is she then grabs some scissors and attacks the woman um and so that's supposed to be like a story about like how crazy she was and i was like no to me that sounds like a story about somebody who's been manipulated mm-hmm. yeah. super bad well, i mean and pushed and to the fullest limit yeah i know how grumpy i am when i get home from a trip <laughs> Okay, I'm like <laughs> this woman. How how many? How, it's old timey travel. So it took her like. And it's the 1500s, yeah. So this right? would have been like, like on a horse or something. On yeah. a fucking horse. I'm sore. Yeah. I'm pissed. I had to leave my baby. I just had a baby. Oh, yeah. I, like at, at the Can end. Can you imagine of my riding tether. a horse with your sore vag after Ow. giving birth? Absolutely Ooh. fucking there not. There had to be a carriage involved. I'm sure right? she was in a carriage. I'm sure, sure she was Let's in a hope. carriage. But regardless, those carriages don't yeah. look comfy. That's not the height mm-hmm. of comfort, yeah. okay? Like, no, I'm not... it's not like got that cattle suspension going on it, right? <laughs> right. She's... she's. I mean, Maybe look, I boat. feel I'm like gonna, you take a boat that reaction was appropriate. <laughs> yeah. No. You, you, could, could, you could go from the Netherlands. You could yeah, go I think that's where he was. I think he was in the Netherlands. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It was, it was, it wasn't easy, and she shouldn't have done it. And then she got there, and she just fucking snapped. But we like, gotta, you know, yeah. pussy embargo. We gotta stop fucking trash men. That's for real. Like, you gotta, like, listen. <laughs> she needed, Juana pussy needed embargo. a good girlfriend who was like, look, mm-hmm. he's look. trash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah instead of shit. one that was gotten got in bed with the dude that's terrible mm-hmm. the fact that yeah. it was one of her one of her homies too although no you good. know what i feel bad for that woman too because i'm like how you can't say no to a king yeah. All right. what's what gonna happen to you uh, I, I can't sorry yeah. that's my friend like he'll yeah he'll cut your head off it's the 1500s yeah i don't totally. trust that man so yeah <laughs> yeah it, it um so that's the i mean there's lots of bad relationships in history, but that's mm. the one that comes to mind first. Yeah. Toxic, yeah. toxic, toxic shit there. I like that one that you told that one time, uh, Keegan, with uh, the little kid on little Sebastian with the bow and arrow. Oh, that chick like yeah, burned down I'm, the entire town. I'm pretty yeah. sure that, uh, Katie, that your podcast has covered this You've as well. It. Uh, Olga. Gosh, Olga of Kiev. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, that was one of my favorite tainted loves oh that I ever God. did. I was like, that she is that lady savage, <laughs> savage. She, oh my God, what shouldn't have messed with her? Saint. And she's a Listen. saint. <laughs> <laughs> like I she love had to do, Olga of Kiev. Oh, she had to do. Yeah, what she, she had to do. Was she the patron saint of Fafo? <laughs> <laughs> Like, she is a saint like in the. I don't know. She's a saint in like the Eastern orthodox christian religion oh um oh, well, truly wow okay let's see yeah, yeah cause because she I was can't, um, i can't remember she like brought christianity like after she got yes. done killing every killing all her enemies yeah. Yeah. she was like have you all heard about this jesus guy <laughs> and uh so now uh, she's a saint let's see he's super big about forgiveness um <laughs> <laughs> i love no but i can't not have that image of the of him and his little like coat, like his little armor and sword. Right, because she she <laughs> let her son, like her little baby son, like go on the battlefield. I think it's something it's something like that. That's where know. that comes from. It's been so long she, since we covered that story. It was years ago. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is saying that she is the patron. Ukraine's patron saint of vengeance, which I don't know well, if that's uh, true. I was <laughs> right. Appropriate. Yeah, I think she is Ukraine. The Ukraine's patron saint amazing yeah, I, I i love it but Listen. um yeah so i love this for her i love i love this for her she, yeah she was a brutal bitch and yeah no one fucked with her after that no well look listen i have a lot this is why your podcast is so great because i clearly like every woman we've talked about i'm like i'm on their side even the yeah. like, even good the lady in waiting her. i'm like good for her i'm on i'm on their side you know what i mean <laughs> because mm-hmm. listen i give so much latitude to women throughout history especially in these time periods 
because I'm like, w- they didn't have a lot of options. Was maybe, maybe did Olga go a little too far, killing an entire village? Like, probably. Probably, like, a, a smidge, a skosh. <laughs> they <laughs> did tear... They did tear her husband in half, though. They tore like, him the story about- in half. <laughs> the way that they killed her husband is they pulled down branches from two different trees yes. and tied his ankles to the branches and then let them go. Yeah. You fuck so around, you find out. Listen, you, around, you can't you do it. Out. And, look around, and you with it. women, when women are trying, and I'm sure that this is something that you talk about a lot, Katie, on your show, but it's just like if you are trying to um, gain or maintain power without getting like manipulated or killed or having something like that happen sometimes you gotta be a brutal bitch you gotta show them that they can't fuck with you <laughs> like right. look, Absolutely. it's like hitting the biggest guy you know like you gotta hit the bully as hard as you can so that everybody knows I'm not show the one everyone, I'm not the, I'm one. not the one and today is not the okay. day yeah. nope. not the day Absolutely. there you go <laughs> I think another crossover we did was the Marilyn incident didn't you guys do that the Marilyn incident yeah um, well we covered um CC of uh, Elizabeth of Austria, and the ma- that was her son in the Maryland right. incident. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we did a deep dive into it on Patreon. What a fucking oh, right. horrible story! Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Cassie, Ugh. I think you covered that one, right? I on did. Ours. That was one I did. That's so, that makes me so sad. <laughs> like that poor, that poor girl. The I mean yeah. everybody, poor everybody in the story. But I mean that's that. Um, I do think though that story is interesting for the domino effect it had. <laughs> of start world war one yeah it's like if he would have been right. alive franz ferdinand wouldn't have been the next right. in line and then yeah. yeah maybe he wouldn't have been, been assassinated yeah. yeah and so yeah um i love historical domino effects like that i know <laughs> that is, yeah and i think too the one thing that i love about your your podcast katie is like really kind of before you guys came into the scene the only history podcasts that were out there were like I don't know, like Dan Carlin, you know, yeah. or like a, a lot of people talking about, you know, World War One or like yes. men, Ugh. you know. So getting to yes. get this perspective. It's a, no, the, his, the history genre is a sausage fest. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, I do <laughs> have to it's give gorgeous. I do have to give props, though. Um, there's this podcast called The History Chicks. They are the uh, I call oh, yeah. our com- I call the community of history, female history podcasters the history girlies they are the og history girlies they've been doing it for like 12 years now or something oh wow um wow. they and they are oh uh, i mean like basically i ripped off their show and I, i've told them this i'm like i just wanted to do your show but with dick jokes and alcohol and they were mm-hmm. like yeah oh. there's space for us all because they're very like family oh, friendly is. yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> lovely yeah. i do yeah i love that about the podcast community is that not always you know there's always going to be certain people who do certain things but in general it is such a collaborative community it's so different than a lot of um other kind of like media spaces like artistic media spaces where you can meet somebody who inspired you and tell them that they inspired you and they're usually pretty like welcoming uh, you know, yeah. and are very like, there's room for everybody at the top, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's so true. There really mm-hmm. is. And I think that that's something that, you know, I, I know the three of us have always been, that's always been on our radar. Like, you know, any, any step forward, we want to pull people with us. You know what I mean? Like totally. we've all been out here plugging away, doing, you know, doing the work, putting mm-hmm. in the hours you know, so like I know even like when we do our live show, we always have somebody, you know, typically we usually do like an opening podcast mm-hmm. too that will open for us. And, you know, and that's why we started doing double dates so that we could start, you know, yeah. giving exposure and, you know, but also just, yeah, sharing the wealth, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got, I mean, yeah, we got to help each other out. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Love it. And also, I think the stat is like only 28% of uh, people listen to podcasts. So there's so So much much room. room. So much room. There's so much room. Yeah, there's there's room for everybody. My only thing is if you are going to like, we have a we have like a tagline. History is a bag Mm. of dicks. Mm. I heard somebody (laughs) use it on their podcast the other day. It was probably about a year or two ago. And I was just like, 
the fuck? Yeah. Like if right. like if, you, if she then would have been like, that's what Queen, got, Queen's podcast she, says okay. or something. Yeah, then it's like whatever. But I was like, okay, I know there you is, didn't come up with that yourself. That's line. not like a, yeah, yeah. There's absolutely yeah. a line, you know, because there are so many different ways to cover any particular subject right like there's a bunch of dating podcasts but those dating podcasts aren't like ours if a dating podcast came out and it had the exact same format if they did the exact same thing they did uh, they did fuck Mary kills and they did a a true crime segment at the end that would be a different situation because it's like okay there's there is a, a line between saying like you inspired me and saying like i'm completely ripping off your work totally yeah you know. yeah because mm-hmm. yeah. i mean the th- we all know uh, i well i don't know if katie knows we could say it after we record we all know the very popular show that ripped off an indie podcast and didn't mm-hmm. credit yeah, them it out. who are y'all talking about oh we'll tell you after we finish recording yeah okay. yeah 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 <laughs> it's, dude it's somebody it's, wanna text me like it's oh, spicy it's something that oh. still like keeps me up at night where i'm like Ugh. i know yeah yeah, because it can happen to anyone, you know, as far yeah. as, you know, that's mm-hmm. concerned. But again, I think that, you know, for the most part, and I think that this is the experience we've all had, is that yeah. for the most part, most people are supportive. They want to cross promote. They want to, you know, su- you know, support yeah. each other and build together. And again, there's plenty of opportunities out yeah. there for listeners and on both sides you know yeah and the space is growing and growing every yeah yeah, the space is growing and growing it's not showing any sign of stopping so there's room for us all and we just all need to support each other and credit each other whenever we borrow from each other yes (laughs) yes absolutely so So if i listen to a podcast or research something i always make sure to link to that podcast in the show notes oh yeah we do too we always put it in our show notes or in our um on our sources on our website yeah exactly yeah Mm -hmm. so bringing it back to dating do you have any friends that are out on the scene do you have any friends dating i have a couple of friends that are um struggling I have a friend that is in Chicago and she has been there almost a year and has not gone on a single date Ooh. and I'm feeling really bad for and she's gorgeous but like her standards are so high but you don't also don't want to tell your friend like lower your standards you know like <laughs> no. so um she's uh she's 5'10 and so she has a very strict rule about a guy having to be taller than her and I was like okay I was like I get it but I feel like you should maybe give someone a chance that mm-hmm. you know maybe I, they're also you know, five ten. like i'm five two so i've never had to deal with that but same as as a, <laughs> as a shorty because i'm like five three yeah. and a half five four but i do remember having this conversation with christina when she was dating because she's five eight and i know that that was and i know i know that that stemmed for christina specifically and of course you can speak for yourself but i know that that mostly um, stemmed from their, you having negative interactions with guys who are insecure about being shorter than you. But right. I do remember you having a rule about that in the beginning, that you wanted someone who was taller than you when you were wearing heels. And I did say, I was like, well, but what if like someone right. is perfect for you in every yeah. way, but they're an inch or two shorter than you? You know, yeah. like, it, would that really yeah. be like the be all end all deal, deal breaker? breaker. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it obviously isn't. I mean, uh, Eric's 5'10". So, you know, most heels, I'm going to be kind of looking down at him or whatever. But <laughs> it so doesn't matter. It's not, you know, that that big of a deal for me. But I know that's such a huge thing in dating. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know where mm-hmm. that comes from, especially for girls wanting a guy that's taller. Um uh, I think it probably stems from oh, we could go into the yeah. psychology of society like uh, you know just probably you know you you want a man that's going to keep you safe who's, who's you protector, know, protector right. blah blah mm-hmm. blah so you think of mm-hmm. a guy that's bigger than you and like that's probably what it comes from which doesn't really apply to modern day society but I'm sure that's what it stems no. from yeah the like patriarchy. My, my, husband's not, my husband's not protecting me from shit he's like almost a foot taller than me but he's not He's not protecting right. me from anything. You know, exactly. like. <laughs> yeah, I think it is psychological because that's what I've yeah. heard um, a lot of tall women say is that they want someone, especially when you move through the world as a tall woman, you know, at, when society kind of like really values this like small petite frame on on yeah. women in general, unless you're a supermodel, right? Like when you mm-hmm. move through the right. world that way all the time, you want somebody who's going to make you feel 
smaller. <laughs> like yeah. I've heard people actually say that that like when they hold you they want they want to feel smaller because that's what we deem to be more feminine, more like right. womanly yeah. is to is to yeah. be smaller. You know, which is bullshit of course and we know that yeah, but right it's yeah, that's the society that we live in I think. yeah and my tall friend like we've had this conversation she's like i know but i just i'm just not attracted to guys that are shorter than me and i guess you know you really can't and i'm just like you're just discounting so many people in the world like right i feel uh, the same way i had i but, feel exactly the same way she's <laughs> like that's really easy for you to say down there i'm like okay oh like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, too. yeah I, oh, damn it's she's like have you ever well, even though. Because I've never had to, uh, I've, I've never had to date a guy shorter than me because they don't typically come shorter than 5'2", you know, like, so, I mean, <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah. some do, but, like, not a whole lot that I've interacted with, so, yeah, um, but, yeah, so she's dating, I have another friend who, because um, I completely missed the tinder of it all like when i was still single when i was still single i didn't even have a smartphone so like apps weren't a thing i was Mm. on the website plenty of fish but i never no or was it okay cupid i was on some website but yeah you you could only do it like but like i had never even gone on a date with anyone from there i just like signed up and Mm -hmm. i never did and um so I kind of feel like I have FOMO for the dating apps just because I'm like, that mm. seems like a fun game. It, and so like my, a, fr- my friend that, and my friend that lives here in Austin, sometimes when she and I will go get like coffee or something, she'll be like, you want to help me look at yep. Tinder? And I'm like, yes. I sure would. I would love to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because back when I was still single, even if you were on one of those websites, you didn't tell people that's where you met. Right. You know, like it's you. so funny. There was you were like, yeah. so much stigma. It's so different now. And so like, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm very happy in my relationship. But yeah, like sometimes I'm like, oh. Well, but I, you know I, what? The thing this. is, the few times that I've been allowed to like be on someone else's like app and swiping I'm like I would be awful at this because I like it's it's a left swipe for everybody like I'm just like ugh, yeah ugh, ugh. well I, <laughs> like, you know? I think I would just fuck up because I'm dyslexic as hell and I don't oh no like whenever Gone I on the wrong way I, I, yes I know I would I know like I'm probably that's probably good because I would have ended up on dates that I was just too embarrassed to be like I actually meant to say no to you I, like off the top of my head I really struggle to know which way is left and right um, me too. Oh, I have to. I, do, I have to do the L. My ring. <laughs> well, yeah, but you see, when you're dyslexic, they both. Oh, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> I I get so I think that's so funny when because I get that advice all the time. They're like, which one is the L? I'm like, they're both L's. I don't like, know. I, but yeah, <laughs> dyslexic. I used, to, I used to by my writing hand. I'd be like, I would literally go, okay, right. Me I too. Write with my right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I would do. Instead well, of, I, I, now that I wear a rock and I got this big old ring on my finger, that helps me remember. But I was at a boxing class the other day and like had the boxing gloves on and they were like, with your left. And I was like, fuck, I can't see. Like, uh, <laughs> this one? <laughs> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, but I so, do understand yeah. that whenever you've never used the apps before that you're kind of like, Oh, that's so interesting. Like, cause it does, I mean, yeah. and it's why it's so appealing. One, the gamification of it is, it seems fun, but then it does like open your world up in such a way that like those of us who dated mm-hmm. pre app, I mean, and it's a blessing and a curse, but yeah, like those yeah. of us who dated before the apps, it's like our worlds were much smaller, which in some ways is good because it limits the amount of choice. You can have like choice overload where it's like, you've got way too many options yeah. and people just mm-hmm. swipe, 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 swipe. Um, but on the other hand, it opens you up to meeting people you never would have met. Like Christina would not have met Eric almost, almost certainly yeah. not, you know, like right. yeah. without the apps. And especially yeah. now, you know, with more people working from home, more people having remote, like, um, cause you know, people used to just meet each other at work or meet each other through mm-hmm. friends yeah, or, something, or like at a happy hour and stuff. And, you know, with the world just being more remote now too, it's harder to just meet somebody in the quote unquote traditional way so Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Um, I mean it definitely like gamifies it I remember like if anything positive I could say about the apps is like you do get that dopamine hit you know when you're like people like I gotta like yeah like yeah "Mm, I'm desirable but yeah you see but my my (laughs) self-esteem is such that it's gonna like ricochet it's gonna like rubber band back on me where I'm just like (laughs) but 
I wanted to date this guy and he didn't like me because we didn't yeah. match. Like <laughs> I could get, I have such a negativity bias in my brain that like I could mm-hmm. get a million matches Spiral. and still be upset about those ones. The that one guy that, <laughs> I yeah. Didn't get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, no, so I missed that. I did come prepared with, um, even though I don't have a whole lot of bad dates that I'd want to talk about. I did come prepared with one story. Ooh. You want to hear that? Okay. Yes. Yes. Lay it on us. Okay. This is about the only guy I ever ghosted. Because I feel oh. like ghosting is so fucking rude. I've already told you. Like, I believe that yeah. in um, being mindful of people's time, being mindful of people's feelings, um, and showing people you value them. So I think ghosting is, like, the rudest fucking thing you can do. Mm-hmm. I have, like, just been like, I need to get this over and just send a text, which I... Um, haven't always thought it was the classiest, but sometimes you're just like, I just have to get this over with, so it's fine. Even if you had right. to send a text <clears throat> and block, because you're just like, I at least the person knows. Like, but you're like, yeah. I don't want any. At least, yeah, that just left, just left, like mm-hmm. not knowing what happened. I think is just so fucking rude. But yeah. I did ghost one guy one Ooh. time. Okay, so um, in college, I worked at a karaoke bar, and uh, it was a really popular spot. And um, this guy, I can't remember how we. I think it was like something like we had a mutual friend on Facebook or something and we both commented on something and so we slid into my DMs. This would have been like 2008 or something. That's and, a very um, 2008 way to meet somebody is like via Facebook comments. Mutual friends. Yeah. And so like I was like, oh, this, this guy wants to talk to me, but I don't know. I was just like, come to, I get off at 10, come get a drink at my bar and if we vibe, then yeah, we'll see. So he came, but he was cute. He was nice. He he was fine. I wasn't like somebody that was like gonna immediately turn my head, but I was like, oh, he's fine. He's nice. And when I got off, he w- he bought me a drink, and then he was like, do you want to go to Waffle House? And I was like, fuck yes, I want to go to Waffle House. Oh, I yeah, do. Y'all, are either of y'all are any of y'all from the South at all? Ohio, yeah, Midwest. I, yeah, yeah, Southern Missouri. So yeah, definitely familiar with the yeah. Waffle House, waffle smothered and covered, house. baby. Let's go. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, capped. I like them mm-hmm. capped with the mushrooms, mm. but no, um, we don't have a we don't have a Waffle House in Austin. It's really annoying. But Rude. So, I don't think we do either here. Yeah. No. So I was, but I was just no. like, yeah, let's go to Waffle House, um, and w- it was fine. Uh, and then after Waffle House, we got a couple more drinks before he took me home, and um, I did make out with him in his car, and I was like, I shouldn't have done that. I, was it just the Waffle House? I don't know. Um, <laughs> not the drinks. Uh, not the drinks. Definitely the waffles. Yeah. The Waffle House. <laughs> it was the Waffle, the waffle House talking. Sorry. Yep. Yep. And so, um, and then, like, when we were in his car, Queen's song came on, and I love the band Queen. And so, anyway, um, that is important later on in the story. Uh, we, he dropped me off, and he was like, do you want to get together again? I was like, sure. You know, um, uh, I didn't think he was that good of a kisser, but I was like, you know what? People can get to know each other better and like work on that kind of stuff. So it's not a deal breaker. It's fine. Sure, yeah. And um, so we set a date to go see a movie uh, later on that week. And uh, so during the time leading up to that week, he texted me and called me non fucking stop. And it was like, y'all, I was in, I was in school and working two jobs. Mm-hmm. So like, I didn't have. A whole lot of downtime and it was no. just um i was trying to be polite but like one time he and this is where the queen comes back i hate voicemails he left me a voicemail he was singing oh, no nope. bites the dust like while he was just oh. in his car and he was just like i just thought of you and just no he just put the phone up to like his radio and left me like a two minute voicemail of no him bites the dust no i like i get that that was coming from a very sweet place but it's i was cringe. just like it's cringe why the fuck like just text me. Another one bites the dust came I on cringe. and I thought of you. It was so cringe. Okay. So we go on a date again. Actually, I can look up what year it was because uh, okay. we go to see yeah. the movie Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I'm really dating myself oh, here. Oh, I love – wait, I love Let's that see. movie. Let's see when that was That is out. definitely one of, those, one, of, yeah. one of those movies that, like, whenever it's yeah. on TV, there you go. we'll mm-hmm. keep it on. Okay, Always. that came out in April 2008. So, yeah, this was 2008. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Here we go. Um, so we go see this movie and uh, we get lunch first. I'm just sort of like, this guy's kind of getting on my nerves, but he's sweet, whatever. So, you know, and forgetting Sarah Marshall, when um, mm-hmm. we see yep. Jason Siegel full frontal nudity. Yeah. 
Yes. Oh. This man uh, put his hand <laughs> over my eyes. <gasps> I'm like he was dead. trying to Am be I your <laughs> child. He was trying to be flirty and cute, but I was so not into it. Uh. And he could tell from my body language that I was so not into that. And he was just sort of like, and then like it happens uh. again at the end of the movie. And so he acted like he was going to cover my eyes again. And I was nope. just like, I have, I have, mm -hmm. I do. And so like afterwards he was like, do you want to go get a drink? And I was like, nope, no, I got to study. I gotta go. And he kissed me. I let him kiss me, even though, like, I think he could tell from my body language that, like, do not want to be doing it. this. Yeah. But I didn't stop him. Like, he didn't do anything inappropriate or anything. And I'm sure this guy was very nice, but just, like, I can't even remember his name. But it was just, like, after that, I was like, I am never seeing that guy again. He didn't do anything horribly offensive. He didn't it's not do right, it's he like not just, right. Just, you know, I had the like, And it just, like, wasn't right. So hard. Yeah. And yeah. he was trying way too hard. Yeah. yeah. And he just, yes. like, and he was just like blowing up my phone mm -hmm. and it just like and I ghosted him after that. I ghosted him after that. And then um maybe like six months later or something, I was just casually seeing this other guy and I bumped into him when I was out with that guy. Oh no. and Ooh. when I got home I had a Facebook message from him being <gasps> like oh, being like not necessary. I saw you with him and I just um I wanted, why did you stop talking to me and stuff like that? And I never responded. I start. I was actually like, I am going to respond. But then you forgot. To I, that happens that. to me all the time where but I'm like, I'm going to respond. I'm going to respond. And then too much time has passed. Yeah. It's like a week later and you're like, well, now it's too late. It would be rude. It'd be more rude for me to respond now. Just, <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and he's already seen that I've read it and I didn't like. And oh, no. I know. So, yes, yeah, yeah, so that is the only time I ever ghosted a guy. No, I mean, he's Ugh. coming on super, super strong, you yeah. know, I, and, and I just, and so was my ick. Yeah. It, they, yeah. it was, the ick was strong. Like, it, uh, when, but, he was and I feel so bad because he didn't do hard. anything like, necessarily. Like the voicemail, the, no, the, vo the voicemail on your face, like to cover your eyes. Like, yeah. it's all stuff. Like I can tell he's trying to be flirty. Like to me, like that's like, oh, he's trying to be flirty, but it's too much. Like you're coming on so strong. Too much. And I think that this is an important point, which is that you weren't ready to be in a relationship because had that been the right guy, you I would have laughed about it. Yeah. And you, I mean, had you been in the totally the right space, but you're like, literally, I'm working two jobs. I'm, you know, in school, all these things. Yeah. So and but that's just that is truly one of those things that if it had been the right guy. Exactly. If the chemistry had been there, I may have been like, haha, and like covered his eyes back, you know, or something. But it just yeah. wasn't. It just wasn't it. And um, yeah, so I just n never saw him again, never texted him back again. Well, never returned Sir, any wherever you are, again. wishing yeah, you like peace said, and love. Hope name. you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's still thinking about I you. Hope, he's got a shrine to I you. I hope in he's his not found I still. Katie, yeah, why did hopefully you he's stop? Found someone. Why? Oh, no. He's got his ticket stub from Forgetting Sarah Marshall oh, no. in there, a shadow box. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> a Waffle House receipt. It's got, uh, yeah. got, oh, like a Waffle Shut House. Yes. <laughs> he no. cries every it's night. A, yeah. It's in a scrapbook with, covered in tears. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> no. You can't hear another one by the dust without. We change the station. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh, what's oh. wrong with you? Yeah. I just I can't hear this song. I so can't much. hear this song. <laughs> oh, oh my god katie it's been like an absolute honor we yeah, have this is so much this fun has been so much i love so talking to y'all oh honestly same we would love for you to share with our listeners where they can find queen's podcast where they can find you yeah we are everywhere everywhere you get your podcasts we also have a patreon we have a Facebook discussion group where I will not be sliding into your DMs uh, or anything. Um, that's very active. If you, you know, I feel like people don't realize how many female presenting people are into history. Um, and so it's often an overlooked space, but I have found it to be one of the most engaging communities in the world. The history girlies are very loyal so come join us we are a lot of fun uh yeah so we're wherever you get your podcast we have a blog we're on all the social medias come find us come hang out yay yes. mm -hmm. 
Highly recommend that TikTok. <laughs> Get on that Queen's Podcast TikTok. Right. It's very entertaining. Oh, thank you. Right. Well, yeah. And if you guys have anybody that we should interview, if you want to reach out and just say hello, you can go to our one-stop shop of a website. It's myworststatepodcast.com. And we love you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers bitches. <laughs> <laughs>